You are about to see mutilated corpses, burning tank carcasses, and all of mayhem brought to you by Frontline Fatalities. Sup guys at OMG, Ma.org, Game, Replays and YouTube! This will be the 45th shoutcast of Frontline Fatalities with me, Fatal Saint, as your main host and with me today as a co-host I have one of the developers of OMG, Ma Dragon. What's up Dragon? Not too much. Not too much, not too much. Just uh, got back from work I heard. Yeah. Yeah, work, work, work. Everybody's gotta do it. Everybody's gotta do it. Everybody gotta earn some money. <clears throat> Except for the people on welfare. Anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, today we have a little bit of a special shoutcast here with a couple of announcements which we'll be, be getting into after a while. Uh, we're just gonna get this game started. It's uh, 3v3 on Ghost Town and uh, we're gonna see it, take a peek at the teams here. Let's get the taskbar back up. And we got Tommy952 which is Will Kemney, my usual co-host, uh, but he's playing this game. We also have Rommel's Badass or Asus12 and Pink Predator, and they're all playing on the allied side, I do believe. I think it's two allies and a Brit, maybe two Brits and an ally, I don't know. Uh, do you, who do we have on the Axis side? Oh, shoot. I was looking at allies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bottom, the bottom three uh, is the Axis. Yeah, we got Smokers, uh, Snarks, and uh, Tivoli. I'm not sure who Tivoli uh, is. That is Skavola, the creator of such maps as RN175 that well is blocking my KT. Anyways, All right. <laughs> so pretty good teams looking here, uh, both teams looking very balanced I must say, you know, both uh, Skivola, Snarks and Smokers are well known in the community and played a lot of games, uh, Snarks even being on the developer team, uh, Smokers mm -hmm. as well as a balanced dev I think, and then we have Rommel's Badass and he's been around forever, and uh, Will Kenny, uh, my fellow shoutcaster, and Pink Predator as well is also pretty, you know, known of in the mod. He knows how to play, so this should be a pretty good uh, game to watch, I think. So we are at a 10 second mark, you ready to go? I am. Okay, and I'm on pause in 3, 2, 1, on pause. And it's 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And it's media engagements on Ghost Town, a 3v3 map. And I got this fancy cinematic mode on here where you can see experience, health, and the average pop and territory of both teams. So you can see here the rifleman has zero experience from Tommy and 330 health. And he's starting out with two ATGs, a flame, two flamers, and two rifles. And on the far left side we do have Pink Predator, which is also allies, so, uh, or a US. So bar rifles, flamer NGs, mortar MG, MG. ATG and more engineers and on the right side we have Rommel's little bathtub on wheels here or on tracks uh, His kangaroo carrier Freaking ruse. Uh, who do we have for the left side for the Axis Dragon? Uh, Axis actually came out pretty heavy in the uh, AT. We got a martyr and I believe four packs on the field already. Oh wow Double packs from <coughs> Skavola and double packs from Snarks. Yeah yep. He has also got a mortar MG Grenz Two grants, two lots of grants, and let's see what Skavola has. Also a mortar, uh, two lots of KCH and an officer though. And then we have the clown cars and the martyrs from Smokers. I, don't, I have no idea what the clown cars. It doesn't look like Shrekers, it looks like the infantry, and maybe assault grants or something. I'm looking at them right now. Hard to tell. Yeah, we'll it's, see. It's almost as engages. if they knew that they were going to be uh, against that kangaroo at the start here. Oh yeah, and he's going into a death zone right now. <laughs> it's gonna go into the center now, he changed his mind. Uh, I don't know, maybe he saw all the green cover there, there's packs everywhere. Mortar barrage is going down on that almost destroyed building in the center, there's no one there though. And uh, uh, early engagement on the left side. Oh, hitting two mines with a half-track, what the heck? 
I think all the pigrens inside died. Uh, I believe they did. They're all dead. Uh, he's wow, that's cheeky. He just planted a mine on top of ATG <laughs> with the, with the Schwim wagon. Holy those are gonna go down Jesus. quick order. Oh yeah, uh, all those uh, oh, KCH. No, the officer coming over. Oh, there it comes. And that's a new unit for uh, OMG. It's a terror officer. He has a mini firestorm. Just like the defensive officer he has on the uh, off-map. And we have an engagement in the center here with some Grens versus Flamers and Rifles and the Grens getting the heck out of there. But uh, on to... Suppressed. Yeah, Mortars KCH. Gone. Just mortars and death everywhere. And that bathtub just took a beating from the packs. He's got a damage engine, but out pops three Commando PS and an LT. And he's trying to destroy the mortar piece there, which he decrewed before. Here comes the mortar. He's gonna take out the bathtub? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Left side, uh, infantry half track is immobilized and all kinds of shenanigans went on and everybody's dying. And here comes the fire. Uh, but onto the announcements. Uh, you have a bunch of stuff to talk about today, Dragon. I do. Yeah, let's start off about talking about the doctrines, which soon is to be implemented in OMG. At least tier once or close, and afterwards we're gonna roll out uh, tier based, and it's probably gonna go much faster. Right. We um we decided that the best way to do it was go through it in a tier based uh, manner instead of just releasing everything all at the same time. Um, the thought is that at least doing it tier by tier, we can make it so that it's balanced. We can see what could potentially make you know a good combination later it's going to be too overpowering so by releasing them tier at a time we can balance them before release uh, releasing the next tier <clears throat> yeah exactly so instead of releasing them all just in one bunch you're releasing them tier by tier and when, if one tier has some abilities that would be too overpowered with other tier abilities you're just gonna balance that straight off the bat instead of having a nightmare of balancing them all together Correct. We're not going to wait until they're all out and then and then go. Oh shit! That was uh, a little over, you know, over the top there. Let's go ahead and fix that. So uh, tier by tier is going to work out better. Um, we're going to rely heavily on the public. Uh, obviously, we're going to do some internal testing uh, on the doctrines, and then once they're released live to the public, we will rely heavily on the feedback that we get from them uh, as to what we do, uh, balancing them or changing some of the stats or whatever you know we need to do before we release the next ones. But as you said, uh, we're going to release them in a quicker manner than we have. Obviously, you know those that have been with the mod for a while have realized it's taken us almost two years to get these out. Uh, well, they're finally coming, and uh, the plan is, uh, at least right now, to do it a month at a time. So tier ones will be released, and then hopefully a month after that, tier twos, a month after that, tier threes, etc. Uh, one of the things that you're going to notice when we do release them is the units that are locked down by a tier will be locked, obviously, to the doctrines. So for tier ones, you know, you have airborne, you have rangers. Those will be locked, and you will have to unlock them to play with them. The latter units, like the tiger, the panther, uh, Pershing, those will still be unlocked for every purchase as normal, and we won't lock those down until we come to that tier. Yeah, so things like, uh, say, in Terror Doctrine, a King Tiger, which is a higher tier, obviously, since it's a King Tiger, uh, it's still going to be available even though only Tier 1 is open. So technically it would still be locked since the Doctrines or that tier isn't released yet, but it's still going to be open to play with. So people don't get, you know, considering some Doctrines will, you know, rely heavily on higher tiers. Like, if you really want to play with the King Tiger, you're going to have to unlock that later in, like, whatever tier it is. I don't actually know the exact number. But instead of, uh, you know, well, in in lack of a better word, cock block certain players from their play styles, <laughs> right, <laughs> they're, right. they're still going to be available for people so they can they, they can be. just play their regular games. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then another key component that I know a lot of players were dreading, um, some were actually looking forward to or are looking forward to, is off maps. Yeah. Um, so our answer to off maps is kind of a twofold way. One, you have to unlock them. You don't just get free off maps, obviously, that would be kind of stupid. Uh, but the second thing that we are adding to hopefully balance things out is that you have to purchase the off map. Uh, so I believe in this first tier, um, you have a recon run and a smoking run for airborne. 
they have to unlock it and then they have to purchase those. Um, they're you know not high cost, but you do have to purchase. I believe most of them are about 50 munitions each, and you have a maximum of three uses that you you can uh, purchase. So we feel that players will have a little bit more control. You know, you don't just buy the ability or, and then get three uses. You have to buy the ability and then you can buy up to three uses. You can only do one if you want, because uh, you know you have to balance it out between your upgrades and then the off maps. So we feel this is going to be a good way to make it so that you know you don't have <clears throat> in the other mod <clears throat> the uh, overpowering abilities that uh, you know the ar artillery had for the uh, for the British. Um, obviously, this is you know our our theory, and we will adjust it as as we see fit and as the, the feedback comes in. But uh, we think that's going to be a good way to go about things. Yeah, that sounds like a proper way to do it. Uh, it it just sounds less you know it, it, you have to sacrifice you know on unit upgrades that cost munitions to get the off maps and vice versa you know you have to balance it however you want to build your company so you know it's not an instant win button in the sense if you just unlock it once and then you just get three uses for free or something where it becomes right. very hard to balance and you know very overpowering in so certain situations combined with certain doctrines uh, and units and abilities right it should be easy, uh, and like you said, you know, players are going to have to really think: should I, should I get this grenade, or should I save those munitions and invest it in in a, an off map, and maybe you know, an artillery barrage, and, and am I going to get a better, you know, I guess bang for my buck for the artillery, which obviously you probably would, but is it really going to, you know, are you going to get the returns from it as you would a grenade if you were in close, you know? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That's the, you know, people people have always been able to customize their companies, you know, with the uh, resource bonuses, which we will be getting onto also, which is also getting updated. Uh, but uh, more on that later. Uh, but they've always been, you know, able to customize their companies how they see fit and to their certain playstyles. And the same will, you know, apply to off maps now. You know, if you will build a company that heavily relies on off maps, obviously you can buy all the uses you want, but it's at the same time going to hurt, hurt your you know, on the field units because they will have less upgrades. So I think it's a right. good compromise. People can still, you know, if, if that's what they want, they, I want to build a very off-map uh, uh, dependent uh, company build. You can do that, but at the same time... You can do that, and you're gonna hurt some players might hate them for that, but <laughs> that's yeah. their choice. Yeah, exactly, that's their choice. So they can always customize it uh, however they see fit, and I think that's a very good thing. Yeah, well, and that's one thing that we're big on, and that's one thing that when we started OMG that we we really wanted players to be able to almost completely customize their company as they see, they saw fit, and this is just another way that they can do so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, tier to tier basis uh, released on the doctrines, and the off maps will be uh, you know uh, controlled with the munitions cast, and also obviously uh, unlocking them uh, and had limited uses, obviously. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, on to another topic, uh, is uh, something that I think uh, I'm personally very, very, very much looking forward is the momentum uh, change. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, I am not the only one, and I can say that for certain. Uh, momentum changes. Um, obviously, from the start, there's we tried to make it so that there was a reason why there was a defense timer and, and, and meeting engagements and whatnot. And, for the most part, one of the things that we've noticed is that, for you know reasons unknown, one side will pretty much dominate during a war, and so the other side is left with a four-minute defense timer, uh, which is um, hard to come back from some of the time. Yeah. So, one of the things that we've gone about is we're going to change that up pretty much completely. There's still going to be defense timers. Um, but we're going to tie them directly to a, uh, a um, war map. Um, and this is one of the two new systems that we're going to put in. Uh, let me see the real quick. All right, basically the momentum is just going to cue, you know, current, the global things, like the momentum needs to be reset, um, where the end of the game timer is going to go, etc. <clears throat> so when you go into a battle, you ins you will in that battle be part of a mini war. Uh, each war has a multiple number of mini wars um, or territories, and you can decide whether or not you want the defense timers uh, by selecting which territory you want to fight in. And this is while you know 
it will all be visible in the, the briefing room. When you go to select a game, you'll see exactly what you're going to be playing for. Uh, you can decide if you want to play with a defense timer, or if you want to play with meeting engagements. Um, so you, and, and then you'll see if you're going to fight against the territory that the allies hold, the axes hold. Um, so, for instance, if I'm an ally player and if I want to fight in a territory that, that we hold, uh, then I'm obviously real world type stuff. You're going to have to wait for the, axe, the enemy to get there. Uh, so you'll have an extra few minutes to ready your defenses. Uh, and then vice versa, you know, if the Axis is fighting in, in Axis held territory, they got to wait. Um, so that part is pretty much very similar to what we have right now. Um, but the difference is we're going to add not necessarily new game types, um, but there'll be defense timers will get offset. So uh, we'll be adding additional configuration options for automated random changes to the system. Um, and the static areas. For example, an area which gives one side an upper hand, uh, something like a few pop per player. Uh, this won't be hidden in the lobby again, it will be shown so people know what they're going to get into. Um, and then to counter the, oh, I don't want to play that because that team's going to get, you know, two extra pop, three extra pop, um, there will be a. Uh, the players that are playing in the handicap will actually be a re rewarded if they do win. The side that has the advantage, they're not going to get anything special for winning, but the side that overcomes that obstacle will be re rewarded for that. <clears throat> uh, the idea of this is immense, and it's probably going to be continuously developed uh, as and when Lee gets the time to do it. Uh, he's actually the one that, that came up with this idea. Oh, yeah. He, he, he barely plays Competitive Heroes and has the best IDs ever. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I don't think Lee has ever played a game of... Uh, Oh, oh, heroes oh, or OMG uh, he, he's played omg i've played with him i played with him i played once with him it was hysterical <laughs> uh, but you know obviously this is this is something that's been a, a hot topic not not only with the the general community but the devs i mean we've gone back and forth on it arguing in the, in the internal dev forums whether or not we should lower the defense timers uh get rid of the defense timers um so lee came up with this idea and it should be a good one. I mean, it's going to give players reasons to have the defense timer and, and overcoming their you know obstacle if they choose to fight against a handicap, which we hope players do. I mean, we don't want you don't want to play a game where it's easy mode all the time. I mean, you got to you know challenge yourself. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> the you know the momentum change is going to be you know it's going to be a massive difference uh, in my opinion because as you said it's very hard to get back from you know a losing streak on a certain side. In some wars you will see. Wehrmacht or uh, the Axis forces just getting pummeled. Whatever they do, we just keep getting pummeled and pummeled and pummeled and pummeled. There's nothing you can do about it. For some reason, you're just on a bad losing streak. And the four minute defense timer, uh, which will be pretty much constant then, uh, since the Axis will just keep losing right. the whole game, uh, you know, ends up pissing off people because, you know, four minutes just, it just takes too long and but you don't have a choice, and with the you know with the suggested implementation of the defense timer, they're gonna have a choice at all times, which means mm -hmm. basically there's there's basically no more complaints to be had, in my opinion. Uh, as right. you can, I mean, you can, you can have the choose players, yourself. You're gonna want you're gonna have the players that choose to play medium games the whole time, and, and that's fine. That'll be the front line mini wars. But then yeah. you're gonna have the players that want to you know have the defense timer and want to. Um, the, then the other ones that are going to want to challenge themselves and, and it, it should be a whole new dynamic once this goes in yeah exactly uh, you know just the just the ability to choose back and forth and you know it's also gonna help balance you know uh, players that are maybe not that skilled or are new in the mod they're gonna mm -hmm. you know have a fighting chance it's like yeah we we now have one of these guys he's he's brand new and all the other guys on the opposite team they're you know they're all uh, they're all known in the community and played a lot of OMG games, so we're gonna give you know a handicap to uh, to, the, to the new players team. But at the same time, you know, if the experienced team still manage to overcome that uh, that uh, you know uh, advantage that the new players team has, they're gonna get rewarded for it. And I think that is a big difference, and it's gonna be you know it's just gonna add a new layer of fun somehow. I agree. Fun is and, and fun is what it should be. You shouldn't be pissed off playing a game <laughs> yeah exactly and that's maybe what some players feel and uh, even devs feel right now you know when it just goes over the top with you know one side being pummeled for an entire war and there's just nothing to do about it well and, and one of the main reasons that you and i are doing the shotcast right now and getting this out there with doctrines we do hope that we we can get new blood into the community and, and get new players in so this should help them um 
get acclimated to the game style, the gameplay, and, and you know, get past that new player status and, and get into the you know fetter, the fetid. Yeah, the veterans in the community, and you know, have all of a sudden being you know a known name on the battlefront. Right. And I just saw an M8 doing a cool two-wheel spin thingy before it exploded <laughs> on the road. I've been watching this too. Like I don't know, I don't know if you were looking at it, but over on the left-hand side was Smokers. We had Smokers hit a, you know, a, through a, I believe it was a bundle nade, and pretty much took out two rifle uh, squads, and then was ma managed to get a, a company, I mean a squad, into the building and take them out completely. But yeah, I, I think uh, he hit a mine over there. There was a, ma was mine, it a mine. Yeah, yeah, I just I went over there right when it happened, so I didn't see. What Everything it was exactly, just exploded but... suddenly, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? The? And uh, I noticed uh, there was a mine oh, yeah. before, and now it's While gone. While we were talking earlier, this game it looked like the Allies were just going to push these guys off the map quickly, and now the, you know the the it looks Axis completely are different. coming back. Yeah, the Axis are really coming back hard here in the center. They've got a fortified position, you know, two mortars, packs, MGs. Uh, they got three mortars on the field right now. Oh from, yeah, mortar uh, high track and from, uh, stolen Snarks. mortars. Yeah. yeah, there's just, you know, there's no way that the Allies will get in there. They're gonna be, you know, Robo could, could pull it off with his commando mortars if he gets the counter mortars off and takes them all out. He just took one out in the center there and basically he has to turtle his way into the center if he's even gonna stand <laughs> a chance of winning this game. And he cannot do anything wrong right now. Because at the moment his teammates are very hardly pushed back, you know, Will Kenny is in the center, he's trying, he's trying hard just to keep them out of the center, or the back part of the center at least, to not completely fold his whole front line. But with the two mortars pummeling him and his AT guns, uh, he's having a hard time and he's gonna keep having a hard time until maybe Rommel on the right side, which is a bit decapped for the allies at least gonna be able to push them out from the center. But at the moment uh, on the right side, uh, Skivola found a little engineer from Will Kenny, which was back capping there. So now <laughs> the Axis are gonna take it back once again. And it's looking yeah, really bad for the Allies. Smokers is gonna be able to push up through and uh, take some more territory. I mean, there's only a couple of squads of, of infantry right there that, that's holding that. Yeah, pretty much. I think uh, Pink Predator has his EC-8000 and he's chasing this Puma now. See if he gets shot off. No, it just turns around the hedge there and just runs away, basically. But uh, there's no AT, though. Uh, only Vanilla Grins from uh, Skevola. And the EC-8 misses. Because it's a uh, half-breed between an M10 and a Sherman, basically. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, back to the topics. We also are introducing a ladder system. Um, we are. And actually, the ladder, something, the ladder system is something that, that I myself uh, created. Uh, actually, and this goes back to the very beginning of the mod. I wanted to get this in a lot sooner than we did. Uh, and so this is something that myself and Andy uh, came up with. I came up with the idea, and then like we just bounced things back and forth. Um, so we will be putting the ladder out. Now, the ladder is not going to come with War Sleeping 3. Um, it's another one of those, you know, to be continued, to be determined uh, type of things. So it, it will be coming out after War CP3 is done. Obviously, Lee is spending his time doing that right now, um, and then this will go in. But uh, it's going to allow teams of three uh, to compete in a two v two ladder. So you have you know, the team of three that you you have a substitute if somebody can't show up for a match. Um, but it's also going to allow single player uh, rankings. So um, you know it's just going to be a, a, a new uh, again with the momentum change. This will this will add another dimension to it as well. It'll be a competitive play. But it's not something that everybody has to do. I know that there's there are players that don't want to play ladders. They don't want to you know I guess get that serious about it. Yeah, they just want to play casually ones. sometimes. You know, right. it's and just a casual game. It's supposed to be fun. Exactly. And then to players like myself, uh, fun to me is is uh, challenging myself in, in playing a ladder so I can see myself you know, rising. Uh, so I believe I sent you the link so you'll probably put it up uh, after you're, you're doing your stuff on this and hopefully everybody goes and checks that out. Uh, but it's um, well thought out and it, it will be another uh, fun addition to the mod. Yeah, exactly. So th that's it's basically going to be something between a mix of basically normal OMG with the OMG systems, etc, etc. And you know, the VCO ladder. It's going to be a ranked ladder basically. It, it, it will be a ranked ladder. We will have a ranking system. Uh, I'm not sure if players are, are, uh, know what an ELO is, but many games use an ELO ranking system. Uh, basically, it's a mathematical equation. Uh, if you go to the, the link and read about the ladder, I actually have the link in there, and it tells you how the calculations are made. Um, 
but players will get to uh, okay for anybody that hasn't played a ladder uh, basically what you do is you start on the ladder and you start playing games as you're playing the games you get ranked you move up and down uh, you know the system which is called which is why it's called a ladder you move up and down the rungs um, you can uh, choose to play you know a higher ranked person or team and if you do then you can move up on the rungs or you can choose to play a lower ranked team if you get challenged and if you win you pretty much stay where you are but if that you know team that challenged you wins then move up they won't move up to take your spot but they'll move, move up in their rankings uh, and I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I just watched a sniper do an epic dodge against two vet two bikes trying to hunt him down. <laughs> uh, that was so lucky, I must say. And now the brand guy has his finger apparently glued to the trigger. He's just running around shooting his brand gun everywhere. <laughs> I love that bug, it's so funny. Um, he basically yeah, never stopped shooting. What I was saying, it's going to be a rank system. Players will get to see what their ranks are. Um, we will reward those that play, the teams that play, we will be rewarding them with uh, victory points. They're not going to be, you know, a, a lot of victory points because it's not fair for those that aren't playing in the ladder. Uh, but it's going to be done on, I believe, it's either a weekly or bi-weekly um, setting so that um, we'll look at the rankings and see. And it'll be done in quarters, you know, top 25%, middle, uh, and, and so on. And, and you'll get a little bit of reward for playing in it and hopefully keeping it going. And they're going to be short ladders. I'm thinking that... The max is like t uh, 10 weeks, which, um, you know, it's four months. Uh, excuse yeah. me, two, mo eh, two and a half Two months. and a half months, yeah. Oh, where I came up four months. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, we're thinking two and a half months per ladder, which will allow, you know, people to, to do a lot of moving through the rungs if they're playing those games. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and this game is just spiraling out of control with... <laughs> MGs and I don't know explosions everywhere. The center is just a death zone. There's just crewable weapons everywhere, snipers reaping havoc and all kinds of shenanigans. Basically, <laughs> this is crazy, crazy. Uh. And here comes a P4 IST to squish this little Brit blob, which is a bit suppressed. That's not good. And Smokers did take that. Uh territory on the left hand side like I thought he would. Yep, and now he's got two EC8s shooting at him in the building there. Yep. Well, G43 ain't gonna penetrate that shit. <laughs> we got another mortar moving up in the middle. Another mortar? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another mortar hot track, that is true. Oh my god. There's a lot of artillery on the map and I mean you got, okay, you got a Shrek on the field. It looked like he was gonna accidentally pick that up with the. You know, oh, it comes the swing bag and he the finds the sniper. Ah, that sniper is so toast. Too loose, sniper. Ah, he retreats off the field. He's <laughs> gonna die on the retreat path. You are not gonna see another day. Here comes the IST. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't really have an AT. He's got the EC8 from Pig Pedder that can come help him out, I guess. Yeah, he's bouncing shots off the skirt. Yeah, it's gonna keep bouncing all game long. T-17 is not going to penetrate out of shit, but the EC-80 is gone though. Oh, we got the 17-pounder turning. Oh, it turned the wrong direction. Oh, he's running. All kinds of shenanigans going on here. Uh, it. Yeah, so let's see here. <laughs> we also have an agenda to talk about is uh, RB changes and RBs is resource bonuses, which basically you can buy for your victory points, which you gain during games. Uh, the current RB system, I'm sure everybody knows, you you buy a, a resource bonus and you lose uh, negatives on, on two of the other resource bonus. The only reason that was put in is because we figured at the beginning that we would have uh, the Doctrine abilities out much sooner than we did. Obviously, we didn't. Uh, so, uh, it was thought that you couldn't just gain uh, v VPs and then just spin them on RBs because then you'd have armies and and whatnot running around that'd be way too powerful so that was why we came up with the one one for two you know positive and then two negative yeah. uh, but there's been a new system that we thought about this is the second uh, of the two new systems that's going to go in um where players will be able to customize what they get again it's you know customizing a company uh there will be slider bars and you'll be able to slide your, your resources however you want as you buy uh, the resource bonus packages uh, with their victory points. Uh, you won't see negatives unless you choose to go all the way to the right hand side with a single resource. And then you will have to you know, get, go negative on the resources. 
but that's not going to be a common, well, we don't think that's going to be a common thing. Um, so players will be able to, you know, get maybe 25% more pop and, and you know, 10% more munitions, and they won't have to lose anything in fuel. Um, but if they were to go 100% you know, more munitions, which actually isn't going to be 100% more, I'm just saying you know, fully on the right-hand side of the bar is um, that they will have to take negatives on the left-hand side. And, and right now, uh, Lee and I have been talking, and we don't know if it's going to be a automatic um, kind of inverted thing where you move the mouse all the way to the right-hand side. Once it breaks the 50% mark, then the other one starts automatically moving down, or where if you slide it all the way on the right hand side then your know, thing pops up saying okay you need to lose this many amount of resources and then let you choose where you put your negatives um, that's still be being determined but Lee is still working on, on coding on that so that's the other new change and, and obviously like I said it'll be more customizing uh, people can do with their companies yeah instead of having a fixed value to you know get a bonus uh, and then get negatives for you're gonna have slider system which is you know very easily to manipulate yourself to get exactly how you want to customize your company. Again, with customization of your company exactly for your own playstyle. Uh-huh. Yep. You know, players are going to want more fuel, and some will want more fuel for more vehicles, some will want more munitions that, for the upgrades. You know, some might just want a whole bunch of uh, uh, manpower to field like a bazillion rifle squads. Yeah, exactly. But, that's uh, up to them to and choose. with the current system, it's a fixed value. So sometimes it's like, yeah, okay, I, I need a fuel RB, but I actually don't need 140. I need something more around the range of 80 more fuel because I want this one vehicle here. So right, now they're, they're going to be able to do that. There'll be, I guess, microtransactions is the best way to put it. You know, you'll get yeah. like you know, 10 manpower or something like that. That's not the right value. We're still, that's one thing that's still being determined is, is to actually how much you'll get per uh, victory point that you buy. Um, but you know, we'll let that, uh, we'll release that to the public. It's not going to be a hidden thing, so you'll know exactly what you're going to get when you when you purchase it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and we also, all obviously, with all these changes here, uh, which is going to get implemented. Uh, first of all, we're going to need uh, uh, also to talk about uh, War CP3, which is also coming. Right. Um, Lee's actually working on that and the finalizing of the Doctrine Ability code pretty much as we speak. I uh, heard he had a setback last night, um, oh. <laughs> which he wasn't too happy about. Uh, apparently, the call-in modifiers, uh, for those of you that don't know, some of the abilities that you can buy um, allow you to bring your squads on earlier. Say you have a full commando poppy, uh, platoon, you can bring those on earlier. Um, or if you have a full, I think there is a one for tank busters. If you have all tank busters in one platoon, they can come on sooner. Um, and these need special code, and each one of them has to individually be code, coded. And uh, apparently, Lee, as he put it, he fucked it up last night and <laughs> lost an entire night's worth of code. So he has to redo that. Oh, God. Um, uh, that's bad. But, uh, I kind of digressed and sidetracked there, but he's working on both of them at the same time. Um, and, and it's just going to be a new look, a new, um, re, a fresh look at, at things. Basically, I know a lot of people don't know this, but OMG is put together as a patched thing. Everything that we've done from the start has been patched. So we've had something done and then, you know, we realized we needed something else added to that. So we had to patch in more code and patch in more code. And so if anybody's ever looked at a script or, you know, any coding language, you don't comment everything fully, and if it's not uh, correctly done, there, there is, believe it or not, a correct way to, to code and to comment. If it's not done, then it's just a jarbled mess. And that's kind of what we have right now in our, in our code. And so Lee is going back and redoing all of that from the ground up so that it will be more efficient um, and then it will be uh, more customizable. There's, there's going to be a lot of admin options that we can have. Um, for for us admins that will that we can't do now because there's no way to implement it and then he'll be able to implement those um, with with the way he's doing things. Yeah. So basically, what we got now, the situation we have now with the Warsaw is basically a band-aid situation, I guess you can call it that. You know, with yeah, things yeah. being band-aided in. Seen, like, every, in the, over the last year, everything you've seen added to the to the um, company manager is a patch, and it was just kind of thrown in there. So we're getting rid of that, and he's doing everything from the ground up. Everything that was put in the WarCP th uh, thread on the forums was taken into consideration, um, and many of those things made it in. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I probably should just lock that for him because we're not. It's pretty much been decided upon what's going in. Um, so I, we hope that the, you know the community is going to be happy with it. Yeah, I, 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 I probably think so. <laughs> I would think so. Yeah, um, I think also the situation pretty much arose when, uh, uh, since I do believe there was someone else actually working on, uh, you know, the company manager, et cetera, et cetera, before Lee took over. Yeah, Gary. Um, yeah, so that's why I mean, it's which, basically been added on afterwards instead uh, of. We can't fault bam. Gary because he basically got the mod up and running you know he and i got it going together for those of yeah. you that don't know i don't actually do a lot of the programming uh, i've only done very little of the programming uh my main responsibility is the database like i control everything in the database from you know the riflemen to i don't know all the new units they all have to have a database entry um for each entry that we make uh there's three entries that have to be made because I have to put them into one table and then that one table I have to put them into two other tables just so yeah. everything links together and Lee is also going back and, and uh, streamlining the database too so that that's not going to be needed uh, so it's going to be an all around general upgrade for everybody yeah exactly it's just going to be I think it's going to be uh, the biggest upgrade it's going to be for you uh, and the other programmers mo uh, especially you know because everything will just be you will know how exactly how everything works and everything will be there in one smackaroo basically and you're gonna have control of everything much easier yeah at least uh, he's already said that once war cp3 is done he's going to basically pretty much depart uh, he may do things here and there like you know finish up the or the immense idea has well not finish it but keep going with the the, the war map idea but he's got other projects that he's going to move on to and uh, so it's going to be left to those of us that are still going to be here to to keep it going and to add things. If we, you know, I don't ever see OMG being completed. There's always going to be stuff that we can change, balances, maybe new units still. Um, so the, those of us that are going to be here are going to have to do all of that. Yeah, you can always do things better, you know, in all kinds of aspects. Anyways, we also have the, a little bit of time to talk about the donor perks. And the banning system. We can do the banning system real quick first. Basically, yeah, I'll do the banning system is quick. Basically, if you get banned with our new system, you're banned. There's no proxies. <laughs> there's no nothing. You're, you're banned. You're out of here. You're out of here. You're done, son. You're done. <laughs> Three strikes. You're gone. Um, because we've had people in the past that you know we banned them and they didn't they didn't take uh, that to heart. They just were like, okay, no, we're not done. We're gonna use a proxy and come back. That's not going to be the case anymore. Uh, obviously, I can't say exactly how it's going to be done, but if you get banned, you're banned. There will be no playing the mod, and uh, it'll be, you know, timed. So if we say you're banned for two weeks, once that button is clicked, you cannot play for two weeks. Yeah, exactly. If we say you're banned, you're banned, and, you know, don't do stupid things, kids, to get banned in the first place. That's all I have right. to say. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, I know a lot, of, a lot of people think it's a joke right now. Oh, you know, the R&R &R board is going to tell me I can't play for two weeks. Maybe right now it is a joke to you. Pretty soon, it won't be a joke. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we also have a little bit of time to before this replay ends in this total massacre, which we just saw, <laughs> uh, with donor perks, which I'm also looking forward to, because all the extended stats and whatnot that you can get rewarded is pretty cool. I'm totally gonna, you know, on a monthly basis uh, donate now. Uh, you can talk a little bit about that, I guess? Uh, one of the things, that, as everybody knows, that the mod is run off of donations. The server, since we put it, uh, put it up, has been do run off donations. Over the last couple of months, the donations obviously have, have dropped a little bit because there hasn't been a whole lot going on with the mod, and so some of us devs have had to come out of pocket. Well, one of the ideas that we've come up with to uh, hopefully eliminate that problem and make sure that our bank account is, has enough money in it is to come up with donor perks. Uh, so these are going to be a, you know, you can donate one time, you can, we're actually going to add a subscription button to the front of, uh, you know, the front page where you can subscribe. Um, they'll probably be in the amounts of five, ten, fifteen dollars, you know, three different ones. So that'll be something that you can do and, and you, you do it for however long you want to. If you subscribe, you know, you can do, you know, three months of five dollars. So you, you donate fifteen dollars essentially to us, but that helps keep things going. Um, we felt that just giving you a tag and a new channel on TeamSpeak wasn't going to be the best thing um, to keep those donations coming in. So we, we came up with some uh, new perks. And like like you said, Fatal, one of them is extended stats. Um, I'll, I'll just I'll run down the list and then maybe if you have some questions or if you want to talk about some, we can. Uh, 
public achievements list uh, and signature images. Uh, if you're if you're not a donor, only the registered users can see your achievements. Um, there will be a notepad in the War CP or yeah, as part of the War CP that will keep notes persistently, uh, so that you can put whatever you want in there. Um, you know about other players, about your company makeup, um, and stuff like that. It'll stay there every time you log on. It's going to be there until you delete it. Um, the advanced stat page. Everybody's been wanting that for a while. It's coming. Uh, there will be donor-only boards, uh, and these this is meaning no moderator for the mods or for the forums will go in there and delete anything. Pretty much the donor boards are anything goes. Obviously, you got to use your judgment on that, but we're not going to be deleting posts, editing posts, stuff like that. Anything goes on that. Um, but there will be three boards. One, uh, two of them would be open to the devs, and, and one of them will be locked to the devs unless a dev donates. Um, yeah, devs can donate too. Anybody can donate. Yeah. Well, one of the main things about this is I don't want players thinking, oh, just because they're a dev, they get you know all these freebies. That's not the case. The devs aren't going to get these unless they're donating too. I mean, obviously we keep the mod going, but you know, if we want these, we're not going to get them for free. Yeah, exactly. It's um, going to be a specific you know donor perk, really a really perk for only the donors. Yeah, it's it's specific perks. Uh, another one is a free naming of three units per per war. So, you know, a new war starts, you can name three units. You don't have to let them get to vet four. You can name them right off the bat and, and you know, players will see them. Yep. Uh, there will be an exclusive donor only skin. Uh, we haven't determined what that will be, but it will be a specific unit for each of the factions. Uh, the fr uh, we're debating on maybe giving VPs, but that's a big if because that actually affects in game stuff. Yeah, uh, exactly. So we, we may not be doing that. Um, there will be a donor high vet list, uh, so in, in addition to the normal vetted units list uh, and the st uh, statistics, donors will have their own list of highest vetted units, uh, seen by all, um, it, but that, that's not part of the expanded units uh, or expanded stats page. Um, and then finally, the one thing that we wanted to do is be able to let the donors test the, the alpha, um, the doctrines. Now, in the past, we've let pretty much anybody just play uh, alpha games as we were testing things, but but this is going to be locked down. So anybody that donates from now until the end of the mod uh, will have access to any testing that we do. So, for instance, you know we're, we're about to start testing uh, Tier 1s. If you donate, you're going to get access to it. Uh, if you don't donate right now, you want to donate you know, two months from now, then you'll get access to Tier 2 or Tier 3, whatever we're testing. So you'll be able to actively uh, participate in the development of those tiers because obviously as we're testing them before we release them to the public, we're making changes. So if you want to actively participate in that, you know, it's $5 or whatever you want to donate and you get that. Now we understand that there are going to be players that are underage, I guess is the best way to put it, and can't donate. And you know, we thank you for playing the mod and we understand that you can't participate in that. And, and that's why these aren't like huge perks um but yeah, it's not like it's going to give the... you a hundred vp straight off the bat it's a here you go now you're overpowered <laughs> it's not going to be right. like that you know everybody's right. still yeah. going to have a fighting chance exactly but um, we wanted to give the donors a little bit more than just a team speak tag in, in a channel yeah exactly uh well that's pretty much uh it for the replay at least and uh, as we can see the allies somehow magically just fucking pulled a rabbit out of their asses and won I, I don't even know. I don't even. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I was I was bouncing back and forth in there, but I mean, yeah, they came out of nowhere, stormed through there in the middle. Yeah. Uh, like Ten minutes ago, and just cleaned the floor. Yeah, they basically just took the axes to the cleaners and took them for everything they got. I think what Smokers is the only one left left alive with uh, only a few units on the field. Yeah, he was basically. I think Brown and Cake did a last heroic rush and got his shit graped in the mouth, and then it was over. <laughs> and then Smokers <laughs> went. What yeah, the fuck he's just got happened? Saw grins over there trying to take territory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was pretty much it. Um, well, <laughs> thanks for joining me for this uh, sh informational shoutcast or whatever you can call it, Dragon. Yeah, no problem. It's been a pleasure, and I hope everybody's got enough information to, you know, keep them going for a couple of months more at least. Uh, things are on the way, things are always continuously being programmed and getting implemented into the mod when it's new units always and all kinds stuff of stuff. In the back. Yeah, there, stuff. there's a lot of things, you know, with the community. Corny is the most well known uh, 
programmer, I believe, since he does all the in-game stuff, basically, uh, more or less. Uh, I think uh, some other programmers also uh, do some of the bounty for Scar. Bounty, pro uh, yeah, for Scar Marcus program, etc. Marcus, Marcus pretty much departed. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he's out of the loop at the moment. Uh, but uh, he's also been helping out with the mod in the beginning a lot. Uh, but there's a lot of people like Lee, for example, who, which is just a magician uh, on the server side, which no one actually knows unless you really ask someone about it you know i know who he is i've i've helped him with a lot of the units etc as we said before in the shoutcast he hasn't really played the game itself so sometimes it just baffles him it's like what the what the fuck is false what is this yeah. <laughs> yeah. what's going on and i've helped him a lot with that you know so i know i i know the guy i've talked with him a lot and uh, he's a nice fellow he, he actually knows exactly what he's doing most of the time except for apparently last night when he fucked up <laughs> but still yeah. shit happens <laughs> That's just, <laughs> yeah, that's just, does. yeah, just, shit just, just happens all the time. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys for watching and hope you got enough uh, information to keep you going for a while. We hope everybody's excited of the uh, upcoming changes. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, I'll see you guys for the next chatcast and I'll see you around, Dragon. Yeah, you too. Yep, yeah, later.